Welcome back to my homestead. Today I am in a beautiful location, ecologically clean, far away from the main roads and all the pollution to harvest beautiful and fragrant linden flowers, linden tree flowers. In my language, it's called lipa. And lipa is known as the jewel of flowers for bees. It's bees haven here they absolutely love it and the whole tree will be buzzing with bees so uh it's end of june today's the last day of june and it's super hot and humid today oh my word it's like ridiculously hot and humid here in new england but i gotta collect them today see um most of herbs flowers herbs whatever they must be collected during the day not early in the morning when there's a lot of uh, moisture in the air um, and not in the evening either so it's best to be done during the day but he, and also we're expecting right now it's super hot and humid but we're expecting some heavy rains and thunderstorms later tonight and uh, all the way into tomorrow so um, I gotta do it today also this is literally the end of the season literally the end of the season and if i don't do it today i'm gonna lose my chance here's a beautiful branch and i'm standing right underneath the tree and i don't know if i had a better microphone you would hear how much it's buzzing because it's filled with different kind of bees bumblebees honeybees you name it they're here so okay so here it is so uh, each little stem will have several little flowers that open up from a little bud. Here's a little bud over here that opens up into a flower and they will blossom white uh, flowers and they are very, very fragrant. Okay. They have a lot of volatile oils in them. So like meaning essential oils and right next to the flower, you will see this little pod. Like it looks like a pod almost. Let me hold it this way okay it has like this pale green pod it's also a leaf but it's a different consistency and it's a different color so what i'm going to be harvesting i'm going to be harvesting that whole thing just like that the flower with the pod and i'm going to be harvesting a lot because guess what this tree is filled with linden uh, flowers so i'm going to be harvesting i'm going to bring them home for drying and i'll tell you all about it but right now i don't want to talk anymore because I want to enjoy the quietness of the forest, listen to the birds and the bees, and just harvest and just be here. So I'll see you guys when I get home. All right, so yesterday was a hot and humid day. It was crazy hot, close to 100 degrees, but I managed to harvest a big pile of these beautiful linden trees. Uh, linden tree flowers and I brought them home and I just kind of spread them out a little bit just so could they could dry up a little bit but what I need to do is I really need to put it in my dehydrator and I'm gonna dehydrate them for uh, five six maybe eight hours at a low and slow so they become completely completely dry let me show you what they look like dry uh, but they are so fragrant and I just came outside and the camera can't show it to you but oh right there but the bee was sitting right inside I was trying not to kill it all right so this is what it looks like when it's dry and I harvested these the last year I have like a little plate here so hopefully you can see it and uh, they dry just like this they turn a little bit darker yellow almost like brownish but these little pods and that's not the real word I have it in the book uh, the real word these are not pods um, because they kind of come attached right to the to the flower see there's like a tiny little stem tiny little stem and um, this little pod attached it's like part of the leaf so what are the linden flowers used for okay so let me uh, tell you all about it I'm gonna give you a quick disclaimer I'm not a doctor I don't diagnose, I don't treat or recommend anything. So always speak to your healthcare provider before making any decisions when it comes to herbs or anything like that. So I'm going to refer to my herbal books to get a little bit more information. And I've been asked already to do a separate video about which herbal books I like, which ones are not so great because there are some books that are not so great. All right, but this one I do really, really like. Um, 
Encyclopedia of Herbal Medicine, 550 Herbs and Remedies for Common Ailments. And this was published in, let me tell you real quick. Where is it? Does it say? Does it say? Uh, 2016, third edition, 2016. Uh, and I really, really like this. And it's by Andrew Chevalier. I'm gonna say Chevalier, maybe I'm mispronouncing. I'm sorry, Andrew, if I'm uh, mispronouncing your name, I, I apologize. All right, so, Linden. And Linden comes from a species of Tilia, and um, it's very fragrant, and we use flowers and brackets. They are called brackets. <laughs> They're not little pods, these are brackets. All right, anyway, so, the reason why they are beneficial is because they contain a large amount of flavonoids and these flavonoids are used um, useful in a cardiovascular system to relax everything and dilate everything and just kind of like cool everything down but also it has um, caffeinic and acid other acids uh, mucilage uh, properties some tannins and a small amount of volatile, volatile oils. All right, so these volatile oils, that's why it smells so good, right? Yesterday when I brought it home and I put it in my kitchen, the whole kitchen was filled with this sweet, very mild and relaxing aroma. Nothing pungent, nothing strong, but very, very mild. So people who don't appreciate strong um, aromas do like linden tree flowers because it's so, so mild. So it's used as a cooling agent. Um, often linden tree flowers are used to relax, calm down, uh, and help to kind of like ease that anxiety and help to relax and fall asleep. And it's not a strong sedative. As a matter of fact, it's considered to be a very mild sedative um, property. But it has a antispasmatic uh, property, which means that often it's used for headaches for um, tension headaches, to relax and treat headaches. It's sweat inducing. Okay, I remember as a kid when we had colds and flus and if we had any kind of fever, mama made tea with linden flowers to help us to sweat it out and sort of like um, treat that fever by sweating it. And it's so mild that it can be even used in children. Again, disclaimer, do your own research talk to your doctors. I'm not a doctor. All right. So what else? It's helping to calm down, uh, helps to fall asleep. Uh, it is excellent remedy, remedy for treating stress, panic, uh, and nervous palpitations. Um, but also it has a very interesting property that mucolytic property where it helps to expirate to cough up mucus secretions when there's a bronchitis or any kind of other congestion it's good for sore throat and sore throat is an interesting thing so people who are public speakers and speaking all day uh, at a special event or singers who sing all day long they often drink linden tea infusions or linden tea uh, tea uh, linden flower tea because it's very soothing and it coats their throat why because it has that um, mucilage property and mucilage meaning that it's going to like coat like almost like a, so so a soap it's going to coat the uh, surface membranes I know that some herbalists use linden tree infusions to help people with upset stomachs and digestion, uh, people who have like um, uh, kind of like irritable bowel to coat things, soothe things, relax things, okay? Hypertension, people who have hypertension sometimes drink this infusions to help to vasodilate, relax blood vessels and lower blood pressure. Again, not a doctor, but it's useful to know how this herb, how these flowers are used, right? So what am I going to do with these flowers now? Well, I'm going to do two things right now. Okay. They have a water soluble properties. So because of the water soluble properties, I'm going to make two things. I'm going to make tea and I'm going to make an infusion. And there's a big difference between uh, an herbal tea and a nourishing infusion. All right. So let's talk about it. So first of all, for an herbal tea or infusion, you must use dry flowers or herbs, okay? Dry flowers or herbs, not fresh. Because if fresh are used, it's going to literally make um, 
broth. And you can make broth if you want to, but that's not what we're going for. We're going for tea infusion. So the tea is going to infuse uh, in boiling water probably five to ten minutes. And how much do we usually need for tea is about two tablespoons. So for me, it's two, two pinches, two good pinches, and I'm making a mess. Good thing I'm sitting outside on the porch. Two pinches. And I'm just using a little um, tea making sieve I have. And I'm going to do it right here in a mason jar because why? I'm going to cool it off and I'm going to drink it like an iced tea. All right. So all I need is my boiling water. Okay. I'm going to put this aside. However, for infusion, actually, you know what? I'm going to go get the boiling water right now. Okay. So I got my boiling water straight from the stove and I'm just going to pour very slowly because I don't want the jar to crack and when I pour just a little bit I'm going to like swirl around sort of just to warm up my uh, mason jar okay and then I'm going to finish pouring all the way through look how the color is already changing to a beautiful pale yellow oh my gosh the aroma is so good I can already smell it so what I always do anytime I make tea if it's in a teapot, make sure you put a cover on, but I'm just going to take a regular little um, saucer. I'm going to put it right on top, just like this. I'm going to set it aside for about five, 10 minutes. Okay. And let this bad boy sit there. But one day I was at a supermarket and I was looking at the whole aisle of teas and there's so many different teas, herbal, non-herbal, whatever. And sometimes I feel like they literally just, um, charging you money for the packaging but look how little is in here look how little so i'm going to open this little package right i'm going to take a teaspoon i have a teaspoon here oh this breeze feels good because it's been so hot and humid oh my word all right and i'm just going to pour in here well it's a little bit under a teaspoon it's not even a teaspoon in here so when you buy store and I don't smell it like there's zero aroma, zero, because a couple of things you need to realize, but look, I brought this on my table and it's attracted several bees already in a bumblebee just flew in. Why? Because it's still thinking that it's a real thing because that's how fragrant and good the, the ones that you collect and harvest yourself, right? Because something that I've learned uh, that a lot of teas that we buy have been harvested who knows when and processed who knows when. And they've been sitting on a shelf somewhere for a long, long time uh, in the warehouses before they even sold. And they still sit in your kitchen cupboard for a long, long time. So um, try to rotate your teas, your herbal, um, uh, all of your herbs every couple of years. So after two, well, mine don't last that long, but yes, after a couple of years, discard and you need new stuff, okay? So just a little commercial break. I wanted to tell you how I feel about commercially prepared teas. You're paying for packaging, truly. And the aroma is not there and the benefits are not there. Okay, so the, um, the tea is being infused um, for 10 minutes. But now let me talk to you about nourishing infusions. Nourishing infusions are totally different than teas. Nourishing infusions means that they will nourish and they will uh, remove a lot of these properties from these dried herbs into infusion. And this infusion you can consume all in one day or you can uh, drink it for the next two, three days. But after three days being stored in the fridge, yeah, I wouldn't use it uh, more than that. Three days is max for me. Okay, so. But infusion means that you're going to be putting a large amount of herb in a container of water and it's going to infuse for 24 hours. Most herbs, you must, the ratio is one ounce of dried herb to one quart of boiling water. So one ounce to one quart of boiling water. But because linden flowers have a little bit of volatile oils in them, very small amount, I'm gonna use only half an ounce per one quart of boiling water. So I need to weigh that. So I have my little trusty scale here. Okay, I'm gonna put my 
zero this bad boy zero okay and uh probably would have been better if i had some sort of a, a funnel here so i don't make a mess in my on my table but i'm going to measure half an ounce Uh, oh, almost a little bit more sorry okay half an ounce of dried linden flowers okay I'm gonna put this aside and now I need to top everything off with boiling water so make sure the water is just off the stove again I'm gonna pour just a little bit into mason jar because you don't want to crack it because you pouring boiling water into it so I'm just gonna pour a little bit and I'm just gonna kind of swirl around and now that the jar is hot, I'm going to fill it to the top. Uh, be careful what kind of jars you use because you don't want them to crack. But I know that mason jars have good product. So to the top, just like this. I don't need this anymore. I'm going to put a cover on. Oh my gosh, now it's hot. Hot. All right. Now I'm just going to... Oh, don't leak. Okay, now I'm just going to put it somewhere to the side in my kitchen for the next 24 hours. Um, try not to shake <laughs> because shaking you create a lot of pressure with boiling water. So I probably shouldn't have even done that um, because now it's leaking. Um, now I'm going to put this in my kitchen somewhere in a corner for the next 24 hours. And then tomorrow I will strain it and now I can use that uh, infusion to drink throughout the day. In small portions, you can put it over ice if you want to, but it's really good to coat your throat, to relax you, kind of like soothe and all of those things. And it, it will release all of these beautiful properties into this infusion. At that point, this will not be tea. This will be infusion. Now, unlike other herbs, linden flowers can be infused twice twice so tomorrow when I strain this bad boy what's remaining that mass okay I can again fill it up with boiling water and make the second infusion so this doesn't work with other herbs but it does work with linden tree flowers so anyway uh, it smells amazing here I have to say it smells amazing so I'm gonna put this to the side okay let's check on our tea let's see what the tea looks like and here is our tea. Oh, look how beautiful this yellow color is. And I'm telling you friends, the aroma, oh my gosh, it's so good. And the aroma is not the same as if you did it from a bag tea that you buy at the supermarket. Please guys, if you can afford to buy um, herbs in their whole form, do that um, or buy them from herbalist but because you can go to uh, herbal stores and buy them in those big jars and just weigh in how much you need so much better than buying those crushed pulverized little tea bags so if you have no chance of finding any linden trees in the clean environmental locations to go and harvest you can always go and purchase them online so I have this from a Frontier Co-op, whole linden flowers, um, and these are organic, and they come in different sizes. This is gigantic, but you can buy in small bag, big bag, but because linden trees are so bulky, and you only order, say, half a pound, it's gonna come in a big bag, and will last you a long time. So, again, I'm not promoting any, but I have purchased a lot of herbs from Frontier Co-op and I'm very, very happy with their quality. So this has been steeping now for about five minutes and let's check on it. It's still quite hot, so I'm going to let it cool off. And someone asked me, why do I cover? Why do I cover? Well, um... I cover because I was taught that sometimes important nutrients can evaporate through steam and you want to contain that in okay so you want to contain that in so that's one of the reasons why I do it 
I feel like I'm at the zoo or something. There's so many birds right now. It's crazy, but I absolutely love this sound. This is a good therapy. Come outside, make some tea and listen to the birds. Very good therapy. So it's been steeping now for 10 minutes and I'm just going to strain all of that out because I no longer need it. Okay. I'm going to put it aside and it cooled off. Now I can, I can gently, uh, I mean, I can comfortably hold that. So at this point, if I wanted to drink hot tea, I can drink it. And I'm going to sweeten that with a little bit of raw honey. Uh, this was my gift from my sister. It's from her bees. Um, and I'm just going to sweeten that with, with a little bit of honey. So someone asked me, actually a couple of people asked me, how come is not a good idea to put honey, raw honey into hot water or boiling water? Well, one of the reasons is that uh, you will lose a good um, properties of honey that are found in the raw form. But also, did you know that honey should never be heated? Honey should not be heated and uh, therefore should not be in hot water because it can actually turn carcinogenic and toxic to you. I'm not kidding. So on the bottom in the description under this video, I will leave a little link to, um, I don't know if you're going to be able to, for you to actually read that study, but there was a study came out that when you put honey or you heat honey to 140 degrees or you put honey into 140 degree of uh, water, you actually create this compound uh, that's found in uh, honey sugars that will turn carcinogenic. I'm not kidding. This is not a kidding joke. So, um, but this cooled off much, much cooler than 140. I can tell you that. So I'm just going to stir my um, little bit of honey and either I can throw some ice cubes in here if I want to or I'll just let it cool off and I'm going to enjoy this beautiful and linden tree tea. Oh, it has a beautiful relaxing aroma. It's perfect. Very mild. Very, very mild. Okay, so um, tea should not be infused more than 10 minutes especially with those herbs that have a lot of volatile oils in them like those that are very fragrant like mint for example or uh, lavender because if you steep for too too long and if you take out those um, those herbs you might see like a little bit especially when it begins to cool off you're gonna start seeing a little bit of that shiny film on the top surface of your tea and that's almost like those oils collecting and that is not a good idea so this is why steeping tea is five to ten minutes and i always put uh, one to two of tablespoons of dried herb okay or if i don't measure them it's basically a couple of pinches with my hands but let me tell you those store-bought ones yeah i would recommend going for the real deal ordering herbs when they are in a whole form okay uh, or harvest them yourself on this note friends i hope you are encouraged to look into a little bit of herbal teas for yourself this uh, this season and learn how to harvest them learn how to store them how to dehydrate them and how to make a good cup of tea or nourishing herbal infusion on this note friends stay encouraged and try something new